be background singing for uh, Keith Sweat, yeah. uh, Teddy Riley, uh, Tank, um, Guy, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But you are an artist. Yes. At the end of the day, like you are a solo day. artist, right? I know, yes. So for so many people, that could look like great opportunity and something that's amazing for somebody's career. How does it actually look for you? In real time, I feel like it is a great stepping stone. Mm. Like, I've been able to do a lot of networking and just get a lot of songs under my belt. I will say the last couple years, I've just been catalog building Mm. because I've been in the studio with them. Then Keith got me in the studio with Tamar. Then I was in the studio with Slim from 112. We actually got a record together. Um, Oh, you're going crazy. Yeah, like, I've just been building my leverage so that way when it is my time, like, it's just undeniable. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones, the big ones. So shout out to my guy Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, we got Maya Malone in the building, man. We go way back. I mean, like, like probably... 10 plus years ago when you had the dreads yeah damn yeah i had the yeah, crazy I even dreads. Know had yeah they, they, they don't you, come on here <laughs> tell them my business <laughs> damn man. well yeah i had the dreads i was cruddy <laughs> well man how you been what's going on man? what's new i've been great you know i just finished wrapping up the new edition legacy tour mm-hmm. i was on tour with keith sweat i don't know if you know but mm-hmm. i background sing with him and i've been doing it for like the last six years now so this was our first tour in six years but we was with new edition tank guy uh and i feel like that's it it was just us but the show was just how did you get in that like the background singing for those guys uh well shout out to teddy riley teddy riley is my goddad Okay, I was like, how, wait, how did you even get to Yeah, this? no, it was definitely a plug. Like, And I always tell people that ask me how I get into this, it's always about who you know. Mm. Like, if I didn't know him and if he didn't advocate for me, I would have never got this gig because people usually keep the people that they've had for years. Mm-hmm. So I really got lucky. Um, but, you know, Teddy introduced me to Keith, and then the rest was history. I've just That's been fire. performing with him. Really, when we graduated, like, right after graduation, I had went to Vegas, and I was just in Vegas for like three months with Teddy. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you get any we writing credits Teddy? or anything? Huh? Well, yeah, with Keith, of course. I got We got songs together. So, um, And then, of course, I've been working with other artists who are like in our market. But I've done Sheesh. a lot just being in that whole vicinity of people. So. so, wait, how do you, I mean, so that's a great opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. Or that's because I don't know. I don't want to assume. But to most people, that would be a great opportunity. Oh my God, you doing back? Uh, you, you you background singing for uh, Keith Sweat, yeah. uh, Teddy Riley, uh, Tank, um, Guy, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But you are an artist. Yeah. At the end of the day, like you are a solo day. artist, right? I know, yes. So for so many people, that could look like great opportunity and something that's amazing for somebody's career. How does it actually look for you? In real time, I feel like it is a great stepping stone. Mm. Like, I've been able to do a lot of networking and just get a lot of songs under my belt. I will say the last couple years, I've just been catalog building Mm. because I've been in the studio with them. Then Keith got me in the studio with Tamar. Then I was in the studio with Slim from 112. We actually got a record together. Um, Oh, you're going crazy. Yeah, like, I've just been building my leverage so that way when it is my time, like, it's just undeniable. Mm. So it feels like I've been in, like, an artist boot camp. I've been in, like, artist development, honestly. That's hard. Like, I thought I was an artist beforehand, like, you know, doing the little shit at Morgan, singing, voice at MSU, whatever, but I didn't know what this game really was until I graduated and then was able to pursue it full time. Mm. Because when you're in school, you kind of got to take that environment and make it what it is, you know what I mean? But in the real world, I've just learned so much, and I'm grateful because I feel like I'm not going to make the same mistakes that a lot of artists are making because mm. I'm just taking my time. So, Yo, talk to me about 
those frustrations though behind the scenes that nobody see before you was even able to train your mind to understand that this is boot camp and I'm doing what's best for my career. Mm -hmm. I know it had to be times where it's like, man, bro, like, is this really doing anything for me? Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Because it's so easy to get lost in yourself mm. doing this because I'm filling the void of all the older R&B legends. So, like, essentially with Keith's fans, they just see somebody singing Athena's part, singing Jackie McGee's part. So, in that situation, it's a lot to live up to because people are now not – I'm not gaining fans – because of Maya Milan, I'm gaining fans because I'm able to sound exactly like someone Somebody else. else. So it's bittersweet. And that's, yeah, it's be frustrating. It's like, it's like, do you love me though? You don't, right. And we'll never know. But it's a great song. We'll it's legendary. Know, I but... know, I know. It's like, will y'all, do y'all really like with me? And I will say, a lot of his fans that I've gained, they do support, you know, anything that I do outside of him. But at the same time, you know, of course you want to make your own name and you want to do what needs to be done. I just feel like I've also seen a lot of failure with other people to where I'm just, like, really trying to cross my T's and dot my I's because I know I'm going to pop, like, regardless. And, but I even told Keith, though, right, no matter what happens with my career and I'm super successful or whatever, because of the bond that Keith and I have, I would still do backup for him no matter mm. how big I got. The fact that you keep calling this man Keith, like, Keith, Oh, you and everybody be like everybody. It's so crazy. Like, what are you talking about? I don't even call him Keith. I really have another nickname for him, but that's another story. Like I'm not that's even about to, crazy. Keep, I'm about to get like, pissed off. This is just always odd. Like yeah, Keith. But, like he, you know, like you know, Slim. Yeah. Like that's my dog. Like not for real. What's up, y'all? Like, <laughs> and they gonna say like, what's up? Because these are the times we talk this about. Like I'm never gonna forget who you know taught me the ropes and. I feel like back in the day, it was a few people who actually was backups and like had a successful, a really good successful career. Yeah, I can't remember no names, but I feel like it's is Neo, Neo Tank. Tank used to sing backup for Keith. Did you know that? No, I didn't. But it was like some female artist that was yeah. really, really, really good that was backup. I forgot the name. I want to say it and be wrong. I want to say Carrie Hilson. But older than that, like I mean, like legendary status. Like Carrie Hilson could sing, hmm. but it, it was some like her. legends, like. Man, and I'm mad that I'm. I feel like I, I don't want to be wrong. That's nah, what I'm nah, facts. Say. I ain't gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it either. Damn, speaking of but Carrie Hilson, man, it was sad what happened to her. What happened to her? How like like the whole her like career got stumbled because of allegedly I don't know some Beyonce. I don't know. Beyonce, yeah, you know I don't remember. But I heard somebody say it. Because like we was talk. Me and this uh, artist Carrie. was talking about Beyonce, and they was like, "Nah, you see what happened to Carrie Hilson." And like I don't even remember. <laughs> they tried to fake blackball my good sis. I want to say, yeah, but like it. there we go. Like you really never know. Like yeah, when I fact. tell you, it's smoke and mirrors with everything. Yo, who you think is one of the who you think one of the the most slept on R and B singers, female R and B singers out right now? Tink. Tink. Yes. Tink is my. Please don't make. That. Are you gonna piss me off? Please don't make that face. Why are you doing that with Tink? It's oh like, I wasn't going to say she was slept on. Oh, my on. God. I you don't think she slept on? Tink, I just, like, she's fire. She's fire, but she don't get the... Recognition. The mainstream recognition. Okay. So, you know what? Who I was going to say is probably the opposite. Who? She's probably, she probably get the recognition she deserves. Who you think I'm about to say? Coco? Nah. She be wild. You seen Broccoli City? Yeah. Performing in the rain? You, you singing in the rain? Hell yeah, I'm singing the rain. She got that check. I'm finna go do what I need to do. Hey, we're gonna see, we gonna see y'all when it's not <laughs> raining. Cause like, I look but too... she had that good wet and wavy, though. She is fire, though. I'm not gonna With lie. the right wig, I'm outside in a tornado. As long as it could flow. I mean, mm -hmm. but I was gonna say Jasmine Solomon. Oh, yeah. Oh, my Well, wait, God. You don't, I think she got her flowers. That's why I said it might be the opposite. Yeah, Tank but it don't took get some the flowers time. Yeah, but I ain't even gonna lie. Her songs... Like, still to this day, I listen to, like, uh, Lions, Tigers, and Bears. Yeah. Bust, the, <laughs> bust the windows. Out. You listen to Bust Your Windows? Bro. Somebody ever bust your windows? Yeah, a couple times. But For real? Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's bro. Okay. You know, Next. You know. But I feel like, yo, Bust the Windows, bro, is probably top 100 R&B songs ever, bro. Like, I listen yeah. to it. I'm like, this is really a good song. I agree. Like, that's, even Lion's talking, she's mm -hmm. fire, bro. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I'm sorry. She's and fire. And I love that you can relate to that as a male. Like, I love that, like, that. Oh, I can't relate to it. 
Oh, you just like how she sounds. I just think the song is good. Like I can, oh, okay, okay. like I don't like. I feel like back in the day R and B. That's what I wish. Like I don't. I just feel like it's missing. Back in the day R and B, I could sing some shit and had no relation. I was young. I didn't care. Like think about it. Like Mary J. Blige, uh, not gonna cry. Like who, yeah. I don't have no kids. I don't. I don't know what she talking about. But I just know <laughs> it was a great song and I could sing it. Yeah. You feel me? Like yeah. I feel like nowadays, even if you did have something going on, like, I don't know. How you feel like? What you think about the state of R&B right now? Like, some question is so cliche, but I mean, I feel like we are in a time where it's lacking. But because I'm in the underground market and I'm around so many popping R&B artists, like I know it's out there. Mm. I think the people have to give it a chance and let it breathe. Like everybody just want to be pound towning and doing all this stuff. Shout out Big Sexy. I love that song, but like. <laughs> Pink, Pink. booty hole brown. <laughs> Nobody, no. Oh, you see? Where the niggas at? You hey, you see? You trying to get a coochie that? scratch? See, you see how you could just bust yeah. out a song with that? <laughs> oh my god, you did not do the ad lib. Jesus Christ! Oh my god, you trying in front of me? Yeah. <laughs> Bruh. Bro, bro, I'm you so weak. Like, <laughs> you see what I mean? I see what I mean? Song. I hate that song. But like, but it's but catchy. It's got you in a chokehold. It got, it's got in everybody a... in a chokehold. Yeah. Yeah. The Alice, thank you. Her Alice is fire, right? Like, <laughs> because people want to feel good, you know? That's a fact. That's people a fact. People want to feel good. So if people can make more feel good R&B, it kind of give the people what they want, but at the same time, make it their own and give us some nostalgia. Then we'll be all right. And, and, and you know what's sad? I'm going to put myself on front street. Mm -hmm. I feel like Coco got a like an old school R&B vibe type of hit. Yeah, what, uh, I see. What is it? I see, I, I I see, see you. you. Yeah. yeah. That ain't really my favorite song, though. So it's like we say we want R&B, but do we? Do we? Yeah, I mean. Because that's an old school an vibe type of. You know, it's cute. Like, it's cute. I like that song. It just depends on the artist. It's just going to take that one person to just do what needs to be done but she got a good you need to listen to her project though because i will say i see you was not my favorite song on the project after i, I listened that. to the project i was surprised they made that the single but then i wasn't because if you think about it hours and hours it was kind of living in that realm and we okay. needed another hours and hours okay. so i feel like her label was like you know i, I don't that. know I but can see that though. I can see that. We needed another hours and hours, and I feel like at the time that's what was the yeah. most it was calling for. But that's not the hardest song on her project. Honestly, that so. wasn't one of my favorite songs either. Sorry, I know I had a lot of y'all in the choco, but not <laughs> they had me. me in the choco. I did a cover and everything. Fine. <laughs> uh, we can do you this. No, but no, it just made want a good like that song. Give you hope. I feel like with the internet today, nobody the that's the last thing girls want is good. They just want some some money and somebody's gonna pay their bills. Man, that's cause the front. Like, yeah, we gotta act like that because y'all don't give a. F but real women really do want a good man. I promise you. Even JT just tweeted the other day and was like. I mean, I might have to hang up the city girl stuff. Like, not verbatim, but she said, like, I kind of want a ring now. Like, I want to get married. So what's going to happen when JT and Carisha get married? You mean to tell me people still going to be outside? Like That is the worst example ever. <laughs> she <laughs> is out here. Got y'all down bad. <laughs> she ain't no city girl. I'm not. She a house she, now. Yo, she, she got y'all down bad right now. She do. So, yeah, she's so, wiped up. So it's good. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a good example, but a terrible because like she she clearly ain't no city girl. Like she is. She in love. Hung up. Yeah, no, nah, but yeah. So it's like we want like if a person's good enough, we are gonna give it a chance if they good enough. Oh yo, are you ready for that? I feel like that's so unfortunate for like just like celebrityism. Like because yeah. like she's probably young. And like all this shit she's going through, I'm pretty sure a lot of women been through the same. Shit. They probably talk so much shit about this girl, yeah. but I'm pretty sure they went through the same. Shit. But the fact that like she's so big and the star power like is always a micro like a micro microscope or a microphone microscope on yeah. her business, right? <laughs> yeah. Like so, it's like it's just. Are you ready for that? Like when you really get big and like you have relationships and you might you might want to tweet something. Now you can't tweet it because like you like the Maya Milan is like oh my gosh she's going through something. I think about that, like, I even said the other day, I need to pay somebody to go through my Twitter because I feel like I haven't said nothing crazy. But they be really, like, digging things up in the woodworks. 
And honestly, when I get on, I'm going to play my lotto card. Ain't nobody going to know who my is. Like, he will be lit, though. For 21 sure. Savage? But we don't know. I don't know. I'm yeah, choosing I don't not know. to know. Well, everybody says. I look, I'm choosing. Not, I like how they're, I like what they got going on. You know, it's like we know, yeah. but you don't know. Right. So I'm cool with that. Like, okay. you can assume, but I'm not, I'm not, I've never even been the poster type, like, without being super lit. I don't post no relationships or nobody I talk to. No, none of that. Why is that, though? I feel like you should post what you really care for. No? So other people could go on my man's uh, page, and then now people liking and following. And they look, it gets grimy out here. Are you the jealous type? It gets grimy. Absolutely. Yeah. What? But I changed in a lot of ways. So it's a healthy jealousy. It's not toxic jealousy. It's healthy. you making shit up now. Nah, it's healthy. Healthy jealousy is when you can let your partner know, look, this bothers me. Like, you have boundaries. You set, you set the boundaries. You know what I mean? So if I'm telling you this pisses me off, like, we have the mature conversation first. Okay. But then if you start violating, then that's when stuff usually gets toxic. But I like to tell people what they're getting into because now I've been told you before you start dealing with me how I am. So if you, you know... You, you get what you asked for. Yeah. I told you. I mean, I tell them at the gate. Yeah, I, no, I, feel, I feel like boundaries are super important. And I wish they would have taught us this as, like, younger, right? Because I feel yeah. like I, we really ain't understand boundaries. We, we just knew if a n- got us fucked up. If you got me fucked up, psh, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's not even like you got me fucked up, I walk away. It's like, now nah, you got me fucked up, so let me get you extra get fucked that. up. That tip for tat is a whew. Yeah, see, yeah, uh, uh, uh. yeah. But yeah it, it, I mean, growth is a motherfucker, ain't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I feel like I've grown. <laughs> I feel like it was something else. But... I feel like I've grown. It's a little razzle dazzle of petty, but I've grown. Oh, you? What's your sign? I'm a Virgo. My birthday's coming up. Actually. I like Virgos though. What's your sign? I'm a Gemini. Oh, you know what? My ex best friend was a Gemini. Yo. We get along though. <laughs> you got smoke for me. Are you trying to tell me something? Like, no, no. But we was best friends at a point. What happened? No, but and you know what? My sister's a Gemini. Like I love y'all. I love y'all. I love the half of you. The, the, the good side. The good yeah. Side? I like the Yo, the cool side. I hate when people say like we got like multiple personalities. Like who the f- don't have multiple personalities? You ain't just one Maya twenty four seven, bro. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true, but I will say y'all got a little extra little spice. Yeah, it's I mean, a little I can spicy. Say that. Like I think it just be like, with me, I feel like both my sides like either zero or like a hundred. Like if I'm chilling, like I got the ability. Like I know people say this, but I got the ability to like really bring down the room, but also like really pick up the room. Yeah. And sometimes like pick it up too far. Like whoa, like sit me down, take. Right, so, right, right. I can see that. You wear your emotions on your sleeves. So oh, for like, sure. So if you mad right now, the whole room gonna feel it. Yeah, probably so. I be trying to work on it. Like it be your face, facial expressions. Be everything. <laughs> no, I, I can I can understand. Yeah. No, I can relate. No, I get it. I get it. Yo, you know what I, I be trying it. to work on as an adult? What? Talking with my face. I be trying not to do that. I, I know. Like some shit happened. So like hard. my face is be like, what the? F-? But I don't be wanting to say that. Yeah. But you gotta master the poker face. Yeah, I would. I would fucking suck in poker if I ever played it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and we ain't in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. But yeah, man. So like uh, outside of the, the background shit, right? You just mm-hmm. came from the studio. Now, is it is it hard to to try to find time for 
Maya Milan, right? Like Absolutely. outside of the work, is it hard to, to to put time aside for the actual artist? Absolutely, but you know what I've been reminding myself as of lately. I've just been remembering who I am. Mm. I feel like I've gotten lost in making every situation I'm a part of like so amazing and doing fulfilling all my duties for what other people need me for. And then when I got off a tour. Like, people know, and it's a lot of artists that can relate. Once you get off a tour, you kind of have this in-between, this gray area where you're not working at all. Mm. You're just kind of left with your thoughts, and, like, you got to budget your money because you've been making money, you got to save it, but now allocate it for the future months, right? Mm. So it's like, as in time of just sitting there and thinking about everything I've, I've got going on, I was just like, I told myself, I wish that you put as much energy into yourself that you do other people. I probably would have been lit. Like I would have like I'm fake lit, but like I probably would have been where I see myself if I would have just really locked in on me. Mm. So, I've been doing that lately and now I'm like even like even us linking up is such a big step, right? It's a mm. full circle moment. Because who would have ever thought, you know, you would be here, I'm here. We from fucking Baltimore, yeah. DC, you know. So, I'm just taking all the little things for what they are, and I'm excited for the future. And I know that, like, everything I've been doing is for a reason. I don't think I've done anything in vain. Mm. I think just now I'm going to allocate my time better and put more energy and resources into myself. So how does that look? Does that look like if uh, somebody calls you for the backup gig or tour, right? Does mm -hmm. that look like saying no to that sometimes? Or, like, how does that actually Absolutely look? Absolutely not. Now, it's about being strategic. Mm. You want me to do the backup, you know I'm an artist. Now Can it's I time open? to be an open act. Give me, give me some. Give, give me. Hey, you feel me? You like, feel I'm, me? Oh, that's on my mind all the time. Can I come out, do a song? Because it's still exposure, and I did still get, like, followers, even from not saying my Instagram name. People was finding me. You know what I mean? And... It's so many people you meet on the road, celebrities backstage, people like coming to see the show that you've idolized for years. So it's just about making now that arena, that mm. that whole world benefit what I've got going on. You know what's crazy? So, mm. It might sound crazy, right? But I seen this on Tiny Desk. Mm. They could really, if they wanted to, mm -hmm. implement you inside of the show, right? Yeah. So for example, it had to make sense. So when when Usher did his uh his show. Mm -hmm. I think he had Eric Bellinger and um Vito up there, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. you know the um the superstar song? Like yeah. it was like oh gave him like, a little solo. Yeah, I you feel me? That, I see and that. even with the uh like now I'm thinking about it, like Tiny Dust is a great platform where backup singers really get Can't exposure. Find. Like, cause I was on um I was on uh uh what's the African guy name, man? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Burner. Burner boy. I was watching his 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 tiny dust, okay. and people was. I think he he was he was feeling under the weather or something, but mm -hmm. he still did it. But people like all the comments on the YouTube was talking about his backup dance, like his uh his backup dance, the the singer. For real? Yeah, the girl. They be like, yo, oh my god, her voice is lovely. Like everybody on the um comments. So like, it, it's sometimes we really can shine if they. Work the show working in at, your favor. And the crazy part is, I wish I dropped the single right after tour. I was just so busy. But people were doing review videos. Mm. I was going viral on TikTok. Like, I got a million views on a TikTok video right now, just me singing with Keith mm. from the tour. So I was just like, now taking those resources and knowing what I know now, it's like for the next tour, I'm going to just make it more beneficial for me and my artistry. Because mm. why miss out on the money and why miss out on all the sky miles? No shade. If I can just... You know, make it count. No, I thought. And then these tours only be a couple months. You know what I mean? So it's not like I'm taking years out of my life to go do something. It's just every day counts at this point. How many dates y'all be doing? I want to say uh, for the Legacy Tour, that was about around maybe either 30 or 40 dates. Jeez. We did from March. I think we started like March 13th and the tour ended May 1st. So about two months. You That's know what I mean? Bad. But then keep tours so much. Like, I actually have shows every weekend. It's just this tour was the first time where I was gone Monday through Sunday. Like, okay, consistent. couldn't go yeah. home. Yeah. Usually I get to go home, have a little break. But no. we was. I'm surprised none of them have a residence, a residency in um, Vegas. We did. That was my first gig. Remember when I told you I was living in Vegas with Teddy? Yeah. My first job was the Flamingo. 
Keith had a residency, residency at Flamingo, and Mariah Carey had it at Caesar's Palace. Do you remember that little era? Yeah. We were doing it at the same time. I went, seen the Mariah show, then I'm going to see her show, then we going to do my show. It was so wild. But, like, Keith don't even like casinos. So, for him, I don't know if we'll ever spend a block on a casino unless it made sense. Mm. But for me, I love casino shows. So, if anybody want to book me in a casino, Wait, let why, me know. What's, what, what, why? What's so special about it for you? It's just all inclusive. Like, you could go to your room and then go down to the floor and go perform and then come back up on the elevator and go to your room. They take care of everything. Food, you want to gamble, you want to drink, do everything. Like, Jeez. they take care of everything. So, it's just like, if that's your vibe, then... <laughs> Cool. So I could just be like a dancer or something. Well, I, I think I could like. Yeah, no, and we have guy dancers. Yeah, like I fucking take my shirt off. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I think you could. I yeah, think you I'd could get, get that shit popping. Well, I could be or like a hype man. man. Come on, bro. Look, I'm, I'm liking it. You could be my hype man because hey. you know me. So I need you to be like you know you know how to DJ. I'm trying to learn because I, t- I just told this. I just well, told you need to. A... But I just told I was just telling him I was like um it was like a while ago because you told me going on a tour and I was like man. I want to learn how to DJ mm-hmm. only for like a show, not to DJ in a party, mm-hmm. cause I like hosting. Mm-hmm. But like, if I could DJ, I would really body an opening set, bro. Especially for R and B. Yo, singer. look, so you're gonna be my hype man. Look, we're gonna speak into existence. We have to do one show together that don't take away from what you got going on or whatever. But one of my big shows. Let me learn how to DJ first. Man. Learn how, yeah. As soon as you learn. And you give it yeah to the stage. I could. I'm trying to tell. You, I think I will body an open it, especially R and B. That's my vibe. It's really? over. What? Oh my god. R and B. I'm playing everything, like everything. I'm playing as yet. I'm playing fucking uh boys to men. Per. Uh, jagged edge. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, stop playing me, bro. Absolutely, absolutely. I see it for you. I'm trying to tell you, bro. I see it. Nah, man. So that's good. Uh, you um you about to drop soon, or you just yeah, going to the studio? Right now, I'm just going to the studio, but I am about to drop though in September. I'm dropping a single for my birthday, so. That's the song you were talking about. Yeah, mm. FYB. Why FYB? Like, come on, man. See, that's that shit. That's why R&B ain't going away. Cause I was like, um, F R E E fuck nigga free. But and- look, I mean, and I do have some. Well, damn, no, I don't got no love songs. Let's just fuck these niggas. Well, and I do got a song where I'm speaking on like wanting my ex back. But like you want the old thing back for real? I did. Not now, but when I wrote the song I did. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's all good. You'll get somebody new and better. Yeah. And he's gonna be doing everything that his ex hated him for and then she's gonna be mad when she see him doing it for you. You know how the game goes. Yeah, I know. I can't wait for that because <laughs> I done seen a few little scenarios. But it's cool, though, because I just feel like I got to focus on me anyway. Remember I said that? Okay. But well, yeah, so fuck you, boy. Fuck you, boy. This is about, you know, city girls still in the vibe. Fuck these niggas, right? Uh, no, nah, because I said I love. Well, it's really love you, but fuck you. But I feel like. I felt like it was too long of a title. Okay. It was going to be L Y F Y L Y B L Y F Y B. That ain't that too much? That's too no, much. No, no, really we see that shit all the time. L Y F U B? Huh? It's like a hashtag. Really? Or yeah. but better than Or L Y F U L Y B F U Love you but fuck you. That's what it is. Love you, but, like, I love you, but fuck you. That's what I'm. That's what fuck it yeah. is. I love you, but I don't but love you that you. much. Like, nah, you, for real. You go to fucking hell. Like, you cool, real. but you ain't that cool. You know, and that's what the song is about. Like, you know how you love somebody so much, but like, if you still see him, like it's up, like it's still fuck you. But if something happens to this person, you would care. Yeah, facts. You know? I was just talking. We were just talking about that. Uh, somebody back what? home. I ain't gonna say who, but it's this guy. I know like, them. Oh. I don't know. You probably yeah, everybody know him, but. Uh, like yeah. some people just be like so fucked up, but yeah. like you want to care for him, but it's like you're yeah. just a fucking idiot. So I yeah. get it, I get yeah. it, I get it. Yeah, love you, but fuck you. Fuck so then you. you might you'll fuck with that song. All right, yeah, let, me, let me listen to that, man. Yeah, no, I'm gonna send it to you. Yo, how was the um like how was I know we in a new city and shit like how was the A for you? you like I love it? Atlanta so much. Why you love it? <laughs> it just reminds me of a more pop in Maryland m- musically. Oh, like, because yeah. some parts when I'm riding through, it look like PG County. Or sometimes I feel like I'm in D.C. No, sometimes cool. I feel like I'm in Baltimore. You know, it's the the home vibe that I like. But also knowing I could walk down Buckhead and probably see somebody, meet somebody. Like, it's more opportunity here. It is way more opportunity. The only thing, the one thing I don't like <clears throat> is it live up to this name, Black Hollywood. Yeah. Right? Think about it. Like, 
clicky. Yeah, like, bro, I got to show you my Instagram for you to give me a pass to the fucking event. Suck my dick. Like, like let me not go into that. It's nah. just, bro, I hate, I hate niggas like that. I'm not that nigga. Like, it's like, I got, I remember I talked to somebody and I was like, bro, like, yeah, I got a podcast. She was like, oh, cool, yeah, my podcast. She let him out. She's like, oh, my God, like, I seen you. Like, why you ain't say this? I got to say all that for you to fuck with me? Like, that's nah, weird. you do. You that's do. Weird. Because I remember when I first moved out here, I was invited to, shout out to Cindy Renee. She's a poppin' writer, fire, like one of my close friends. She invited me to a women in music event, right? And the panel was so dope. Like, women in music that have wrote for the biggest people, you feel me? So I'm, like, really embracing this moment. I'm taking it for what it is. And after the panel was over, something in my mind told me not to go up to one of the panelists. But I ignored it because I'm like, you know, this is women in music. Everyone Mm -hmm. here is a woman. They're trying to help you. We should network. Long story short, I go up to her. And I don't know if this is weird. And tell me what I did was fucked up. But I went to her and I was like, hey, you know, I'm so excited for what you've done. My name is Maya Milan. I would love for you to be a mentor to me. Like, I want to learn how you're doing all of this stuff. Because she was into, like, publishing and all this, like, stuff that you need Mm administration-wise. So, like, yo, can you help me? And I was like, can I just get your number? I could hit you up or, you know, email. She was like, why would I give you my number? People. And in my mind, I'm like, bitch, sorry. I'm like, why would you give me your number? We had a, we're at a, a women in music networking event specifically. Mm-mm-mm. So if not the number, how you can flip that is, even if you don't give your number out, because I don't care, but be like, oh, you know what, sweetie? Hit me on the email. Let me give you my email. Send me an email. Send me some news. You know, like, it's so many ways that she could have handled that, but it just turned me off so bad that I had left and I waited for my friend in the car because my homegirl was on the panel. So mm. I'm with the panelists, and you over here trying to play me like, why yeah. would I give you my number? It That's the one weird. thing I don't fuck with, cause especially, like, coming from Baltimore. Like, for me, I feel like in Baltimore, so many talented people. It and, is. And, like, we not really, like... I, from my experience, it ain't like that. Like niggas fuck with you. Like if one thing they one thing I will say is niggas don't fuck with you, you gonna know. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, it ain't right, like yeah. you feel me? Yeah. But here it's like, boy, you showing a little bit of Instagram followers, you showing some jewelry, some bust downs or some shit, and I need your dick like a bunch of groupies. Like that shit is corny. I don't know. And don't know. pull up in a good car. Don't boy. pull up in that in that Benzy. Man, everybody in this mug got a Benz. I'm just tired of it. I speaking i mean i do but it's still just crazy how my car i could literally have 0.2 dollars in my account and if you just see me pull up in this bins right now you're gonna think i'm rich you're gonna think all this stuff so the facade is crazy the smoke and mirrors for sure yeah like that's why i don't know man i just feel like yeah. you have you been getting that just in your career though like even outside of atlanta like do you uh-huh. feel like wh- i don't know what's the question i'm trying to ask do you have you been witnessing that and experiencing that? And like, how 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 often have you experienced that? Well, people think like just I'm not really wrong. wanting to focus until they see that you're somebody. And and do you oh, think that's yeah. even fair? Like, no, I hate it. Like, uh, people will meet me, and but then again, I don't know how I really come off. Like, I've always kind of been embraced. It's not until I get around other female artists mm. that I've felt. A little weird. And I've had to, yeah, and I've had to give more. And then it's crazy. I've had a lot of situations where I felt the energy in the room. Like, I felt like people didn't like me. Really, female artists. And I was just nice to them. And, like, they, I guess they didn't expect me to be nice, but we're, like, good friends to this day. Like, me and my homegirl joke around, and she would be like, yo, like, I don't know. Like, your energy is just so different from other songwriters and artists. Like, I thought that I had to you know, boss up on you in order to, like, like off the gate. Like, I'm used to people off the gate trying to show me, like, they that nigga, they that bitch. And then when I, like, kill you with kindness and be like, I don't give a fuck about none of that, yeah. now we cool. And I I don't know what that's about, but, like, yeah. people always try to pop it with me. Like, I don't care about none of that. Like, huh? Yeah, and then we end up being friends, so. You think that's a, like, do you, because we see that a lot in the, 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 the like, the female industry right now, like especially mm-hmm. with, female dominating rap right now like you see a bunch of like cattiness and i don't know i don't know where that came from i some would say the fans but just hearing you is hearing you like speaking your experiences is like just the ego thing yes ego it's ego i think people will just see you and just judge you or if you have a strong personality like i'm an alpha female like when i walk into a room especially in the studio and i've written for other artists 
I just come in like, okay, so what you want to talk about? Like, a lot of people are not that direct. Mm. I've learned also, don't be so abrasive. Like, sometimes I just read the room. Whereas before, I would just come in and be like, okay, let's get to work. Da, da, da. Like, let's do this and be super amped up. But people don't need all of that. You know, mm. when you, I've learned when you do that, it's almost like you're trying to assert yourself and act like you're like, whatever. Um, so people kind of take that wrong. So I've also, I've also had to look at myself because it's like, girl, just come in here, relax, be yourself. Speak to the people. People, I've had people literally look dead at me. I'm walking in a room. Hey, how are you? I make it a point to speak mm. to everybody because as soon as you walk in and then you just do what they doing, you just like them, like, no. Yeah, bro, I get that so much, bro, because like, I'm like – I be like chilling, and everybody swear I don't like him. Like I come in, I be just chilling. Like, man, what's wrong with you? Like, damn, I, he must not fuck with me. I don't even know you. Like, you ain't do right. shit to me. Like, what the fuck are you talking right. about? Right. Like, I'm here right. chilling. Right. Like, you just like you got an attitude, bitch. Hell fuck up my face. Like, no, so you just be chilling. Yeah, so it really can go either way. It's just like, damn, why do people people just be people? Niggas like that for niggas. Yeah, I don't, so far as niggas, like, I don't know. I'm like the opposite. Like people. People, I feel like everybody would would never like expect me to be who I am. Like I guess, like, like my platform to be what it is. Like it's still weird to me for saying it, but because like me, no, you're famous. Yeah, but it's just weird because like I'm still the nigga from with my homies. If he got a lot of bags, I'm helping him carry his bags. Should I fuck around carry all on for him? You feel me? Like that shit don't mean nothing to me. Like I'm a mm -hmm. I'm a man. So like, yeah, all that. What you think about me, bro? Yeah, like that shit don't. I, people would just be weird. You're humble. Yeah, like you're humble, would. and you know, I think you should still be humble. I think it's good that people see that humility in you because then maybe you can inspire the next person that's trying to be an asshole in that position. The next person that's popping in your position, they won't treat people bad. Mm. You know, keep being a light because I feel like people feel like when they reach a certain status, they have to take on this persona, this persona that, like, they don't, you know what I mean. Like, relax, yes, bro. Stay genuine. Yeah, no, like, facts. of course, don't let nobody try you, but treat people how you want to be treated. No, nah, facts. Period. That's a fact, man. I appreciate you for pulling up, man. It's good. Thank you so much. I'm so happy we did this. Yeah, like, man. you don't understand. Thank you bro, so much. Bro, do it again. This shit like, cool. This shit light. This shit is really light. No. This shit is light. This shit is easy. This shit ain't nothing. I, um, I'm glad you came. I uh, I hope... Like I'm, I'm, I'm wishing you nothing but success. Thank you so nothing much. Nothing but the best, man. Whatever I can do to support, just let me know. I'm here for real. Like, I'm in the A, oh, so. Don't tell me that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, shit. Don't tell me that. It's like, nah, you got no, it. we it's... definitely going to chop it up for real. No, nah, for sure, man. I appreciate it. I guess just let people know where to follow you all at, uh, where to get anything that you got going on to support you. Okay, you guys. Well, you already know. You could just follow me on that good old Instagram at Maya Milan Music. And the link in my bio will take you to everywhere you need to find my music links, music videos, other interviews, some merch. You know, I'm selling little shirts, Maya Milan shirts, you know, cop yours. But yeah, that's it. Maya Milan Music. M A Y A M I L A N Music. Spell the regular way. No, I appreciate it, man. J Hill, J Hill Podcast, Maya Milan. It's a wrap. We out. Good shit.